tunic cardigans, easy to sew, easy to fit, easy to wear, <laughs> waterfall front, mitered corners, little special neckline. Ta-da! Keep watching. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and we are deep into a series about a purple capsule collection. I am sewing every single pattern of the So Beautiful book by Kenneth Wong. She is the designer and owner at Itch to Stitch. And this is the fourth pattern of the book I'm going to share with you. I've already shared all my plans and the fabrics. We've seen the Mornington top and dress, the Taxan dolman wrap, and yesterday we saw the Prague top. This one originally is designed to have a cold shoulder feature. This is actually one of them that I'm wearing right now, but I showed you how to fill in the gap of that sleeve to have a regular sleeve. You can catch up on all the episodes in the series on the channel and on my blog. I will link them all down below. Today is all about the Carl's Ben cardigan. It's a really interesting design that is super easy to sew. The way it looks on the front is very draped waterfall style. The hem is not level. It does not look level because it's not meant to be. <laughs> all these areas are finished with mitered corners, four mitered corners there. A little bit different to the ones I've shown you, actually easier because they are already in the pattern, so you don't have to measure a thing. <laughs> you can choose long sleeves or a sleeveless version. The sleeveless version is finished with an armband. You need knit fabric that stretches. The pattern recommends 50 to 100% stretch, but I think you can do with a little bit less even because the design is not fitted anywhere and it's very loose. You know, if you have a fabric that stretches 30 or 40%, I think you'll be okay as well. Depending on the fabric you choose, the look it's going to have, if you have a really thin drapey knit, it's going to hang lower and just be a bit more oversized than if you choose something with a little bit more volume. I would stay away from something too structured because it won't drape nicely on the front. You can use modal, sweater knit, rib knit. I have chosen a Ponte Roma as well that is not too heavyweight. Just look at it and see how it falls, see how nice it drapes because you will need that at the front. The other thing that's mega important is that you need to like the wrong side of the fabric that you choose because you will see it on the front just because of the way it drapes on the front. So if you have a lovely knit but the wrong side is white or it's just ugly, you should double think and look for something else because you will definitely see. I have chosen a sweater knit that is very loosely woven and it looks like a herringbone on the right side and on the wrong side it just looks like the opposite of that. It still looks really nice. So I'm perfectly happy to have the wrong side show when the front drapes. And Ponte Roma, you know, is exactly the same on both sides. You can't really tell the difference at all. So it is perfect actually for this type of design. About rayon spandex, I do have it there on the diagram, but I would put an asterisk there. There are different weights in rayon spandex and I've certainly worked with some that are extremely light. I would stay away from those. Maybe look for a rayon that has a little bit more spandex in there, maybe six to 8% spandex rather than the ones that have 5% and just those heavier ones. The way that the neckline is finished with the hem and everything would be really hard to get to look really pretty if your fabric is just too light. When you look at the size chart for this pattern, all you see there is the bust. And actually it's the only thing you need because that's gonna ensure you probably get a good fit on the shoulders and on the neck, this sort of area. But then below, it is super roomy. It's super, super roomy. So if you're concerned that you usually have to sew one size for the bust and then one or two more sizes for the hips or that sort of thing, it won't be the case with this pattern. With this specific pattern, I actually made a size 12 and not a size 14 like I've made in all the other patterns in the book. This one will reach the full hip and depending on the size that you're sewing, it'll be from here, from the back of your neck down anywhere from 23 to 26 inches. I have sewn the original length for one of them and for the other one I had to make it an inch shorter, not because I wanted it shorter, just for it to fit my fabric, but otherwise it won't make a huge visual difference. I know it's really possible to make this super long. There are shorten and lengthen lines and Kenneth, the designer, just made us know you can do whatever you want, make it shorter, make it super long. <laughs> if this was made sleeveless and really long, it could be a really cool duster. So lots of options like that. 
And because you only need one measurement to fit this cardigan, this would be a super easy gift for you to sew someone that will appreciate you sewing for them. I'm really careful with that. I know I only sew for my immediate family. The women in my family, my sister-in-law, my mom, my mother-in-law, they really appreciate the gifts that I make them. So I would be really happy to sew one of these cardigans for them without needing to fit them. It would be a success. The only thing that you might have a fitting issue and depends on how tall you are is the length of the sleeve. So it might end up being too long or too short for you, but that is super easy to fix. Otherwise, the, this area is going to fit. <laughs> Whenever I show you sewing techniques on the channel, I always try to repeat the same idea that what you're seeing here is from a pattern. You know, this is the cow's bend cardigan but the techniques you will be able to use in other garments because sewing techniques are really universal. You will find certain techniques that share the same components in cardigans, in dresses, in jackets. So if you are sewing a lot of variety in garments, you will start seeing these things that repeat themselves a little bit. And the technique that this cardigan uses to finish the shoulders and the neckline here looks like a short collar, although it's not a short collar, this is the way it's finished here. And I have sewn this exact technique with dresses and with jackets. Have an open mind as to what you see and how it can also apply to other things that you are sewing, not just the cow's bend cardigan, if you know what I mean. It's a really cool technique. I have sewn this cardigan over a year ago and that's exactly when I filmed this footage for you. So it was just waiting in my computer for the right time to be able to share it with you because we all knew the book was gonna take over a year to be ready, you know, for you to see it. And it's almost around the corner, the first week of December, so I'm glad I can finally share. Let's see how to sew this cardigan and these different mitered corners. Don't you think this is starting to wear me? You've been raining down like hail on a week. You can see my layout for the cardigan. Now I have the sleeves going that way and the front going that way, but I flipped the back. That area of the arm side is narrower and it just fits right there if I flip it. My fabric is non-directional, there's no nap, so I can easily flip patterns, you know, up or down, it's really not going to matter. And that allows me to make this cardigan with 140 centimeters. This is the wrong side of the back pattern piece and what you need to do, stabilizing the shoulders and the neckline is instructed. I don't really have stay tape, so I cut strips of interfacing. Now this shape here, I actually put my pattern piece on the fold on top of the interfacing and I cut a strip that follows that shape. So it's the same shape, you know, and it's gonna stabilize this. If I try to pull this, you know, the shoulders aren't gonna stretch and the neckline is not going to stretch, it's going to keep its shape. On the top of the front there, this is a shoulder seam and it looks like it would be a short collar and there is a point there marked on the pattern that you need to mark on the fabric. Now marking on this is extremely difficult. I tried to mark with all sorts of things. I can see a faint yellow spot there that you can't see but I've got a pin there so you can see where it is. Basically there needs some stay stitching to be done there like that and like that and then clipping into that corner. These are the two front pattern pieces that are together and this is the top of the collar right there. Now this has been sewn and searched. I've opted to press this open so I've searched them separately that has been sewn. There's a little notch there and one on the other side that need to match. Here on this corner there's a little faint yellow dot that I did. You can barely see. I can barely see it but above that dot you had to sew like an inch above and this way to reinforce stay stitch and then clip and that's what I've done and that's been done on both. I've got the back piece open right side there to right side of the front and that's where I clipped there so I need to match these shoulder seams and from that point match to the point on this side and then sew these. Then from that point there I need to sew on this piece there which is the neckline. So there I've got the yellow dot right there so that's where I'm going to start sewing and I'm going to do that sort of thing that the machine does that does several stitches on the same place. So knock back tacking and then I'm going to keep going to finish this shoulder seam right there. On 
the other shoulder I'm starting from the side so this is the arm side there and then I'm going to go into the dot right there Can see that yellow dot that is where I did that stitch that goes up and down up and down and on my machine it's with that thing there now that the shoulder seams have been sewn from the dot there and from this other dot there I've got the neckline and this pin marks the center so that is where the seam is for that little collar and it matches the center of the back neckline you can see where I've reinforced there and now you can see that the back is slightly larger than the front so all you need to do is from that dot there stretch the front a little bit to match the back and that's described in the instructions but it will be just a straight stitch from there to there. This is how it looks on the right side after the shoulder seam and the neck line have been sewn so you can see that little bit there and then it goes around there, there is a center there, the seam, and then it stops there and you can see the point there where I did all that. This is how it looks on the inside. I have surged the shoulder seam and the neck seam in one continuous go. It's difficult to see but right there where I clipped there's a little vulnerable area right there. Same as on that side. Once I finish the whole cardigan, I'm going to go in there and do some reinforcing stitches just by hand in there. Due to the nature of these knits, you know, they're so fluffy and thick, you can't really see that and I think it'll make this area safer in the long run. I know you love to set your sleeves in flat, so that's what comes afterwards. So here's one sleeve sewn in on the flat, you can see there, and the other one there. So now. The side seams are dangling and those need to be sewn up so it's one continuous stitch for the sleeve there and to the bottom there are four matted corners in this cardigan so that's the neckline coming here and there's one there so the pattern already comes with the slash there and same as the bottom there and it's the same on the other side that's over there so basically you need to press this in half an inch and I've already pressed it. I've actually pressed the whole thing because the hem actually includes the collar, like the whole thing. And I've done the same here at the bottom. So they've both been pressed half an inch. What you need to do now is fold these right sides together like this. And I'm just going to put a pin to hold that there. When that has been folded together, you can see that there's a line there. So parallel to this is where you need to sew 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Then when you flip that, it's going to be super neat. And that means that this gets folded twice essentially and it's a really clean finish. Now I need to clip the excess seam allowance and then I get to do this three more times with all the corners that have mitered corners. Then I'm gonna just press this again all the way around. So I'm gonna press this again like that. So half an inch and then another half an inch all the way around the neckline and the hem and that will include four mitered corners and the finish is going to be super neat. So the mitered corners have been done, the two there on the neckline on the top, there on the bottom. Everything's been folded twice, you know, the half an inch twice and so I just have to do a continuous stitch. I'm probably going to start around there, pivot there, all the way down the hem, all the way up the front, around the neckline and that's it. Hem the sleeves. And it's done. I have already shared my fabric with you the other day and it's such a beautiful sweater knit. I couldn't believe it when I found it here. It's very hard to find these and they only just had this type. They didn't have any other sweater knit so I was happy to grab some and just enough to make this cardigan. Look at the shape of the neckline here, how it curves over like that. The width of one piece goes all the way across and so does the other one. So that's why I'm saying you will have enough space here as long as your bust fits into the size that you choose. This is one corner, another corner down there and the same on the other side. And that's why I showed you a mitered corner and then it was repeated four times. <laughs> 
They are very neat. This specific sweater knit was a little bit chunky, a little bit fluffy to sew, but everything's folded in twice by half an inch and it's so, so nice to sew. All this is one continuous, even the top of this neckline, everything, including the hem, it's all done at the same time. And you do spend some time uh, pressing a little bit, but that's fine, it's not hard. <laughs> this seam here, I surged separately and pressed it open. I think it's nicer like this than just putting both to one side and surging. That could turn out super bulky. And these are the interfaced areas that are hidden underneath the seam allowance that makes the neckline super stable and the shoulders super stable. So over time, you're not going to have a sagging neckline and a sagging shoulder seam. I really love that Kenneth takes into account those things when she designs these knit garments. I really appreciate it. <laughs> the sleeve you saw was so easy to sew in on the flat. You know, it's a really easy cardigan to make. And I'm going to pair it with my Mornington top. Purple solid with black and white is the way to go. I will not be pairing this with anything underneath that has another print. I am not a fan of print clashing. I know a lot of people do that, but I just can't. I can't walk out of the house in two separate prints. For example, these two. I know the colors go together, but I have a print there and I have a print there and I just can't cope with it, you know? <laughs> so let's see how this one looks with a denim skirt and my Mornington top. Here is my Carl's band cardigan with this type of herringbone sweater knit, black and white, I love it. And I made it with this top in mind, my solid purple Mornington top. The top is sleeveless, so it doesn't give me any bulk on the sleeves, something that I'm not very used to. I don't like having a lot of layers on my sleeves. I've got my old denim skirt that I made yonks ago and it goes perfect because this skirt is sort of bluish grayish petroleum color. I like how that looks with purple compared to other denim skirts I have. And my purple boots that I love and I finally have things to match, although I don't get a chance to wear them more than a few times a year. So I'm very happy with this outfit. And this is just so flowy, I love it. Closer you can see the shape it has and these corners. That's where the mitered corners are and that's the same on both sides. And then everything's hemmed really neatly and it just falls like a waterfall. And you can just wear it sort of open or more closed. I've worn this a lot this winter and it was super cozy to just wrap this around when I was watching TV. I just really like the style and it's just easy to wear, easy wearing style. This is the original length, no modifications there. It hits the full hip, at least on me. The sleeves have nice ease for you to wear layers underneath. If you have tops with long sleeves, they'll perfectly fit in there. I just prefer to wear sleeveless things and the cardigans and that's all I need. The shoulders fit well. Maybe I could have adjusted and brought them in a tad, maybe half an inch, but I'm happy with this, it's okay. The wrong side does show, that's why I was careful to pick a sweater knit that had a wrong side that was also pretty that I liked. And you can just wrap this around you and be super cozy. The second cardigan I'm going to share with you, I've just made it just a few hours ago. I literally cut it out this morning and it's a special Ponte Roma that I brought along from Bolivia. Beautiful purple color. I've never ever been able to find any Ponte Roma in that color ever. That was the only time I saw it. And silly me, I only got like one and a half meters. <laughs> So unfortunately I couldn't make it long sleeves because I, it wasn't enough and I had to shorten my front and my back by an inch for them both to fit in my fabric. But I don't really mind, you can't tell that it's a tad shorter and actually I'm not upset that it's sleeveless because it'll still get a ton of wear being sleeveless. Actually it'll probably get more wear being sleeveless. 
super easy to work with. I have taken some pictures of some of the steps while I was sewing this morning and those will be included in the blog post because I think being a solid, all these steps of snipping, you can really, really see them. So if you want to see a little bit more, please visit my blog post as well that has the pictures. Otherwise, if you've worked with Ponte Roma, you know how nice it is to work with. Everything presses beautifully. Doing the mitered corners was super easy. The top stitching, just every single step in this cardigan was so, so enjoyable. I would say easier to work with than the sweater knit, for sure. And it up, it's a Ponte Roma that's not too heavy. It's not too structured. I think it still drapes beautifully on the front. This is my gorgeous purple cardigan and I had purple serger thread. I have been collecting all types of colors because I would not be happy if I had to serge these seams with white or with black or anything that doesn't match. <laughs> I'm just like that, you know? So I have purple serger thread and I've finished all my seams separately like that. I prefer that than to having it all together and being super lumpy. Now, I changed a little bit of the fit of the sleeveless armhole there. Basically, I tried it on, of course. I always try my garments on while I'm sewing. There's no different cut line for the sleeveless armhole. It's just that you don't put on the sleeve. So I had my suspicions that that was gonna look a little wide on me. So I tried it on and for sure it did look wide on me right there and just a little bit too high right there. So I decided to just lay this on my cutting mat. I have a really cheap but very practical ruler that has some arm side curves in there and I narrowed it from the top about an inch and from the bottom about three eighths and found a nice curve there to draw with my chalk. The front and the back arm side shape is not too different so I just cut them the same. I took that little piece that I cut off and brought it to the other armhole on the other side and put it on top and just cut the same thing to make sure they were symmetrical. And that's how I can get this to fit my shoulders a little bit better. If you look at my technique for finishing the armhole, it's not a band, it's a binding. And that has got to do with my fabric choice. With Ponte Roma, I don't like doing neck bands or arm bands. I think Ponte Roma is not a good fabric for it. I think binding is much better. <laughs> So if you look at my masterclass of neckbands and bindings, you will see this exact technique there. I will link that video below with the exact minute of the videos and see it there. I just measured my circumference, cut out a strip that's 90% of that circumference and one and a half inches tall. And I've sewn it onto the right side of the fabric with 3 8 seam allowance, flipped it to the inside. And instead of folding that edge in, I surged it with my lovely purple serger thread because it matches. And you can see it's right over the edge, not that much, it's less bulky. And there it's been stitched in the ditch pretty invisibly so you can't see a thing. And it's a beautiful finish. I think it looks super elegant, super clean. There's no top stitching there to see. Sewing this was a delight, actually. Look at all this sewing. Having all this be seen when you wear your cardigan and it drapes is fine because it's so beautiful. <laughs> the technique and the finishing is so neat. I just think this pattern is really well thought out in the way it's sewn and the way it's going to be seen. It's a simple cardigan, but it's got a lot of good things in there, good techniques. So I'm very happy with it. So I've got this one paired to show you with my two Mornington dresses, my purple print one and my black and white print one. They are print dresses that will go with the solid cardigan in purple. And yeah, I mean, I'm just ecstatic with this. It's just a dream come true. Here's my purple sleeveless Ponty Carlsberg cardigan and I paired it with my Mornington dress. Also in purple print. So a solid with a print is always my go-to. I've got some black boots just to change it up. Although I could wear sandals, high heels always. And I really like this look. I'm glad I get to have it now and finally have a purple cardigan. You can see how lovely this hangs and how loose and how easy wearing it is. There's so much room here. That's why the only measurement that was just important for choosing the size was the bust. You know, there's just a lot of room in here. Look at these points with the mitered corners. So neat. Ponty is so easy to sew, so easy to manipulate. Much easier than the sweater knit. I love how it looks. It is a little bit heavier, but I think it still works fine, at least with this weight of Ponty that I have. I'm not a fan of doing bands, neck bands, arm bands, any type of band with a Ponty. I just think it's too structured. It could look really bulky. 
and yeah, I prefer to do this binding with the stitch in the ditch and it's super neat. <laughs> the finish with the mitered corners and this really neat hem makes for a really nice finish that I'll be proud to wear and people see when I wear this open. I think it's amazing and it's really fun to sew, super easy as well. Again, my purple sleeveless cow stand with my black and white Mornington dress. I dreamed of this look. I had it in my head when I was planning this and I'm so happy to wear this. I think the first time I go to church after lockdown will be with this outfit because I feel amazing in it. And it's just everything I want. A simple dress with a little detail feature there and this loose, easy to wear purple thing that makes it super striking. I love this. Love how this moves and swishes when you walk. It's just amazing. I love styles like this. So wearable and so easy to make. I'm so happy to have these finally to wear them because it's a color combination I really wanted to wear. I've been wearing my black and white long sleeve cardigan all winter. I've been just being really cozy in it. Winter finished just a few months ago and it was a pattern that I really enjoyed and I think if you get this book I'm pretty sure this is the pattern that you will mostly enjoy and mostly wear when you want to be cozy and snuggly and also have a garment that is really pretty. <laughs> so I'm super happy with this. I am very excited about sewing all the rest of the pieces and I'm seeing this come together and yeah I'm not used to sewing like this in a way that has so many plans and that the fabrics all match and everything but so far so good I hope you're enjoying the series don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you like to see a lot of sewing because that is what I do here and I always want to bring you all the value for your time so thank you so much if you subscribe also if you use my affiliate links to buy books and patterns I am very grateful and yeah I will see you again tomorrow with a pair of bottoms pants super fun pants see you soon bye